This is the Mazurka Choro of Villa Lobos. Steve Aaron, professional guitarist and virtuoso. You live your life in music. I've been in music since I was a teenager. I discovered it through the electric bass guitar, played in rock bands throughout high school. But when I first heard classical guitar, I, I was sold. That was the end of it for me. I sold the electric bass, I sold the amplifiers, and I've been doing classical music ever since. What do you have to say about your instrument and the process of making music? I think it's the most glorious existence. If you look at it from this point of view, um, through music you can express yourself extremely directly. The music has um, components which speak to different parts of our personality and different parts of our mood. We can be uh, assertive and electrifying and aggressive. We can be um, quiet and contemplative, and we can be sad, and all those things come through the music very, very directly. And, and part of the whole goal of playing is to uh, find a way to have other people hear and respond to those emotions. So it's a wonderful way to live. How do you find the sound that you believe in as a musical artist? Well, we're always in search of the sound, in a way. But for classical guitarists, um, there's nothing more central to what we do than the production of sound. Uh, this extremely intimate connection between our fingertip, or the fingernail as it is in our case, and the string uh, makes it seem more somehow human or intimate than, say, instruments which uh, separate the person from the sound with a mechanism, like a piano or the bow of the violin, you might say. And so there's something, in my view, a little bit magical about the sound of the classical guitar, and we're always in pursuit of of nuances, of um, ways of modifying the sound in just the right way. So sound is at the middle, at the center. Now, you're a professor at two universities. That's correct, yeah. The University of Akron, where I've been teaching and uh, directing the guitar program since 1981. And also Oberlin Conservatory, where I've been since the early 90s. You know how like a gardener, they got these little plants, and they put them in the little containers and they water the little containers and then sometimes they grow and sometimes they have to pull them out and they have to weed them and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that what it's like to work with students? It's a long, long process. What happens is you do learn to think in a, in a stretch of time that includes two, four, six years. And so when I have someone come to me at the beginning of the process, I can easily see where they will be in a few years. For them, it's a struggle to get through each week you know, uh, as we prepare for the lessons and performances. But um, my job is to help mold them and guide them through that longer process. Yeah, absolutely. There was a conversation that you and I had years ago, because I've known you for many years, and you actually taught me guitar lessons at one point, which was wonderful, two times. And you said something I've always remembered, oh, and that? I want you to share the story with this audience. You and your buddy started off studying guitar, and you said you wouldn't quit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us that story. Yeah, I was uh, roommates with a guitarist who's now quite famous internationally. His name is Nick Galusis, professor of guitar at Eastman. And um, we saw around us the upper class and graduate students, many, many years more advanced than we, um, inexplicably dropping out of the field and taking up other lines of work, even though uh, from our perception they seem to be so very advanced. So we looked at each other and made a pact and we decided that under no circumstances would we quit, and by virtue of still playing, we would be the ones who in the end were successful. Now, whether or not that had anything to do with it, I don't know, but in fact, the both of us are still in the business, so it seems to have worked. So the only bad thing to do is to quit? Quitting is the worst. And really, it's hard to quit. I, when you play an instrument like this, it tends to get under your skin, and I've seen people try to quit, but the instrument calls them back later. It happens all the time. You're talking about four to six year arc for yes. training. Yes. 
how do you get the kind of patience that you have to have in life to deal with that kind of an arc? Really, that's part of the pleasure of it. As the teacher in that circumstance, and, and we're very, very close to the students because we meet as instrumental uh, teachers one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we become like family. And so we're watching them grow. We're watching them mature and watching them go through major life changes. And um, on the other side of it, uh, they emerge as, as quite accomplished guitar players, artists. Many of them follow through in the career. It's an incredible experience. And what happens as I look at it from my vantage point now is I've accumulated an incredible family of alumni over the years that I've taught that are part of my life now and always will be. For most of our audience, they're not professional musicians. Many of them, music is listening in the car. Mm -hmm. They love it. Others play an instrument, but they're not too good at it. Why is that okay? Oh, it's a wonderful thing about music is that it's accessible to everybody. And, and there's no instrument that's more universally accessible than the guitar. Um, it's, it's the people's instrument, and it's that way everywhere in the world. Uh, partially because guitars are available very inexpensively. Um, and with a few rudimentary skills, you can play hundreds of songs. Um, the guitar tends to be played by everybody. And so um, I think that's one of the wonderful things about it. The guitar um, finds one foot in rock and roll, one foot in folk music. We have a lot of feet. A foot in classical music. and and uh, we can do all the different styles equally comfortably. And um, perhaps more so than some of the classical instruments we don't see uh, as visible in rock and roll or in popular styles, uh, the guitar is truly there in all the arenas.